Hi guys, welcome to a new Psychic Podcast, and today's Psychic Podcast is on the madman or genius, John McAfee. Which one was he? John McAfee passed away several days ago now from this podcast, and um, as a surprise, but kind of not a surprise, but as a surprise, um, his wife Janet is insistent that he was not suicidal, because of course it is claimed that he committed suicide in jail, a jail he'd been in in Spain for the last eight months prior to his death, and um, they had been warning on Twitter, Janice and as well John had received a tattoo stating that he would be whacked. They were stating that he was receiving death threats. He was receiving threats to his life from government sources prior to his death. Is that true? We'll have a look. Before we dive in, welcome to my channel. Those of you that are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the gray bell so that you receive the updates. Those of you that have been supporting me for some while now, thank you so very much. You guys, if you are not members in my membership site, Star Walker's Handbook, check the description box below. You'll find a link. We are traveling and journeying this month to Sirius. Um, we were meeting once a week to travel and I'll be teaching you about your Syrian guides, how to connect, how to work with Syrian energies, and so on and so forth. And of course, if you want to be a part of that, become a subscriber. But also, I'm offering a sale between July 3rd and July 7th, when the Syrian portal and gateway is open. Sirius is conjunct our sun during this time, and it opens up a flow of energy. And I did do a video on that, so go check it out. It's a pick a card so you can see what is great for you but it's a flow of energy that can uplift us and elevate our consciousness so there is a sale 30 percent off you can schedule your reading any time you wish can be in october can be now whatever however the sale is only on for the serious gateway between july 3rd and 7th Alrighty. So John McAfee, John McAfee, he was the one, the creator of the McAfee antivirus software back in the, what was it, 80s, 90s? And um, it was brought to his attention. He was a genius creator, IT guy, you name it. But it was brought to his attention that viruses had made it onto the brand new, actually, personal computer Microsoft platform. And as he heard the story and he was wondering, how could that be? How could that, they make that work? That this is a piece of code that self replicates and distributes. He figured out or he downloaded, intuited, whatever, how to stop it. And that was the beginning of McAfee antivirus software. Now in the beginning, it was a free download. So within with two weeks, he racked up 5 million people using it. But he was soon scouted or scooped up by the government into government contracts. And it was during this time that he observed a lot, saw a lot, learned a lot that caused him to reflect on the state of our being, right, as a collective. He eventually, of course, sold McAfee antivirus for several hundred million dollars. It was later sold for 7.7 .7 billion, again, resold. But that's his name on it. This allowed him to live a lifestyle of luxury and joy. He moved to Belize and he's always been a little bit into guns, into girls, into uh, madness, let's call it drugs. And um, it started to affect his psyche. And he had the story goes that he had a dog that was constantly barking on his property in Belize. And one of his neighbors complained about it. John didn't do anything about it, so the neighbor threw over a poisoned piece of meat, which poisoned the dog. John flipped out and hired someone to kill the neighbor. It was a huge scandal when it happened, but nothing really happened to John, which was interesting. He made his way back to the U.S., was living there for a while, but then he escaped the U.S. again because he was being searched or looked for for tax evasion and so on and so forth. So apparently his taxes are racked up to 50 million and he didn't have the 50 million in spare change and he didn't see why he should be paying that amount in taxes. Um, he was in jail waiting, awaiting extradition from Spain to the US. And um, during this time, these, uh, you know, last couple months 
of his life, he, he really started unpacking, but he's always been red pilling. Like ever since he started living his own life, basically, and stopping a government contractor, he started putting it out there on various platforms. Um, and at first people thought he was crazy, <laughs> but now people are not so sure. And what we're doing today is tapping in to see, first of all, because some people are already saying, oh, he's not dead, you know, the usual. And um, he was Epstein, and of course, is he, you know, living somewhere else? Um, is this all true? We don't know what to believe anymore, so we're going to tap in. Now, the thing is that when we're asking, and this I learned when I was searching for missing people, is that when we're asking if someone is alive, spirit is most likely to answer yes, because there is nothing else but life, right? So everything, even if we're deceased or passed over, we're still, according to spirit, very much alive, which is very true, right? So what we're looking for is a incarnated in a physical existence on earth or not. And immediately as I ask that question, I get the answer no. He's not incarnate, but he's definitely very much alive. So he's, um, he's quirky. He was very paranoid in his life on earth. But then again, the definition of paranoia is to be exceptionally worried or concerned about threats that aren't real. Whereas the question remains of the threats to him were real or not. And we're going to dig into that, in which case he might be reclassified as being overly cautious, but he was known to have ex Navy seals in his house, walking around with guns. Um, he was known to be exceptionally, uh, you know, it was almost like trying to connect with a, a, like a drug Lord out of the movies. Right. So it was, that was the kind of lifestyle he was basically living. Alrighty. Anyways, um, let's dive in and see if he really was a threat to the powers that be, if he committed suicide or if he was suicided and what happened. I mean, we all have our ideas and conceptions, but once again, as always with the psychic podcast, take a deep breath in with me in through your nose, out through your mouth, and we're releasing everything we think we know. We're pouring out our cup of knowledge and emptying ourselves completely and allowing spirit to refill some things we think we know, but we really don't know, right? So we're not letting our ego get in the way and we're willing to see things from a different perspective or even learn brand new things that we've never seen before. And my intention for this reading, of course, is accuracy, clarity, and truth. So let's start with who was John McAfee. I'm just taking a sip of my tea. I'm working with my playing cards, you guys. And who was John McAfee? What kind of a character, what kind of a being was he? John McAfee. And I'm definitely getting that this person wants to talk. There's a lot he wants to communicate about still from beyond the grave. He really wants to connect with people that he loves. Um, I feel like there's a daughter. I'm not quite sure he had a daughter or not. I didn't check into his family or anything like that, but it feels like there's some kind of a younger female that was like a daughter, if not a daughter to him, that he wants to reach out and connect with. Um, it feels like there are a lot of broken connections. He wishes he could retie, but at the same time, he's fully aware and willing to let them go. He was definitely a little bit more awake than we give him credit for, even in those that are partial to him and affectionate of him. They still tend to kind of see him as this crazy madman, but he was definitely a little bit more awake. Um, people also say that he didn't want to die because he had all this... Uh, guns and people and guys all around him. This was someone who was trying to maintain his life. Um, I disagree. I'm immediately picking up on a deep depression, a very deep depression that he could only get out of. A, he tried to drink himself, party himself, drug himself out of, and it, it comes from a deep disillusionment with life, a deep boredom with life. I also feel bored with the earth, bored with the planet, bored, bored with this life experience. And he tried to alleviate that boredom by finding all kinds of things to do, but eventually he ran out of things to do and he thought, what's next? Um, this is a man that never truly left his mind, although he had a heart, right? He loved, of course, 
but he never really experienced um, diving into the heart or connecting in through the heart. He was always looking for the next thing outside himself. Um, let's see here. Who was John McAfee, please? Who was John McAfee? I'm getting an eight of spades, a three of hearts, and a two of spades, and a three of spades. So the abundance of spades here, right, looking at who he was, is really, it's, it's very negative. So he was going through a really negative time, a negative cycle, and the three of hearts has to do with, um, it's not a very, you know, the hearts is generally a positive suit, but the three, the five, the seven, they're not really positive positive cards on the heart thing. So the three of hearts here has to do with, um, it might have been a third party. There may have been, I want to say his, okay, this is tough going, you guys, but his relationship may not be what it appears to be in the public eye. Like, I do feel like they were best friends, like they, you know, um, connected with each other deeply and so on and so forth. But or maybe this is his past, you know, because as I'm saying that, I'm feeling, no, like um, Janice was his everything, right? But his past, uh, the three of hearts, broken hearted, but also a lot of cheating, man. Like three of hearts and seven of hearts. Seven of hearts is deception and cheating, but three of hearts is really serial cheating, third party, a lack of connection, um, partying all the time, lack of true intimacy, you know, that kind of thing, right? So there are a lot of girls, <laughs> A lot of women and we get the eight of spades which is a lot of travel small business small business deals the two of spades you know starting to see something on the horizon but it never fulfilling or coming to fruition the three of spades again heartbreak right mm. I'm sorry I'm sipping my tea <laughs> sorry I made that noise I can't edit it out and I'm not going backwards so um, some of you that are noise sensitive. Um, let me see here. It really feels though like this is a deep depression with the state of his business and the state of things. I also want to say that he regretted selling his business. Um, he felt scammed. He felt uh, taken for a ride. Um, but this came after, right? So I guess after they sold it for $7.7 um, he sold it a little bit too early and I think he I feel he regretted that he regretted that Because he could have bought anything and anyone if he just waited a little bit longer But at the time there were a lot of imitations cropping up I'm hearing a lot of imitation businesses a lot of businesses that were also sending as uh, selling antiviral software and he thought it would be now is a good time to jump off now is a t good time to jump before other businesses get bigger than him or you name it, right? He didn't want to miss the opportunity. I hear Kaspersky or Kapinski or something like that. There was another antiviral software that was like starts with a K and has something with an SKY at the end. And I feel like that would have been also a major... Um, mm, I don't know if they that shot up at around the same time, though, but I'm hearing that. Okay. So, what made him awaken? Ace of Swords, Ace of Spades, Ace of Hearts. I want to say that he almost Ace of Diamonds. Oh my gosh. Okay. I want to say this has never happened, you guys. The three Aces and the Five of Spades. Okay. So, I got Ace of Spades, Ace of Hearts, Ace of Diamonds, and... Um, five of spades and i want to say that i want to say that um his life was full of with the three aces full of life sudden twists and sudden changes um the five of spades is also indicating a um, he would have experienced this as negative however you know like even though it wasn't per se I do want to say that uh, he would have experienced this as negative. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The five of spades also has to do with um, 
loneliness, depression, separation accompanied by pain, grief, sorrow, um, going down a dark path, fear of abandonment, surgery, I'm not quite sure he had surgery or not, divorce, uh, quitting, leaving, uh, cutting someone or something out, anger and loss, like it's a very uh, violent kind of card. And I want to say that his the changes in his life with the three aces here, they were always characterized by deepening his sense of loneliness, his sense of abandonment, his sense of loss. Okay, like somehow it was never a positive change for him. Mm. And that contributed to his awakening. Basically him always asking why or trying to find a way to alleviate his pain. Was he paranoid or just overly cautious? Um, I'm definitely getting... So the cards that came out are the King of Hearts, then the Ten of Spades, and... Ten of Spades can have to deal with obsessive and compulsive behavior, secrets, mysteries, lies, criminal activity, betrayal, evil forces. And he was very distrustful and paranoid about his home. So I want to say, let me get a clarification card on this. Was he overly paranoid or just overly cautious? Um, there was a slight threat. Um, he also took very light threats seriously. That's the thing. Like You couldn't crack jokes with him about his security. Uh, he would take it immediately to the next level. Um, I'm sensing a very sensitive person here. Someone who's incredibly sensitive. Uh, and who didn't know how to deal with his sensitivity in the beginning. Like had zero coping skills, you know. And the Ten of Spades is indicating that he was OCD. And it's also indicating that he was definitely... There was a mental issue here, okay? Mental health. And a health issue, possibly heart circulatory issue. Okay. Let's have a look into his mental health, since that's being brought up. Mental health. Mental health for John McAfee. John McAfee. the nine of hearts so he was healthy the seven of hearts um he was just paranoid about betrayal yeah so the people yeah okay and the ten of spades again and the eight of diamonds so i'm getting that the first card was the nine of hearts and that usually indicates that yes he was he was healthy the seven of hearts is a paranoia about betrayal feeling like he's been betrayed, being betrayed, will be betrayed, um, fear about that because um, people like to mess with him. That's what literally what he picked up. Like People didn't take him seriously. They saw him as a jack of clubs. Um, they saw him as a someone that they could mess with. That's what he perceived, right? And um, so there's something very, a little bit infantile about him in a sense, emotionally immature. But I guess that contributed to his creativity, right? So, um, yeah, it's interesting how that plays out in life. And, but the Ten of Spades is indicating that he took it to another level. So it's, uh, no, he wasn't crazy, but he was intense. He was an intense person. He was someone that was really, um, mm, next level, next level. And 
I feel it had to do with his business. Like it all with him, it was all about the money. It was all about the 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 eight of diamonds has to do with taxes as well, and we know that he had issues with taxes. So he felt like he was being betrayed. He felt like his home country wasn't his home. He felt like his home country was out to get him. He felt like, yeah, taken advantage of. And especially what I'm also picking up on is he already had to do with the government. He already, so he's thinking, you know, the government always already made this amount of money off of me. They already made so much off of me and they got so much out of me um, for way less than what I was worth. I don't owe them anything anymore. That's the way he perceived things, right? So, hmm. <laughs> he was hardworking and he was honest in a in a way when he was younger, right? So he was a hardworking person who was out for honesty, but he got screwed over. He was a very sensitive guy, by the way. Very sensitive. Very sensitive. And um, what I'm picking up is this person got so effed with and so, um, yeah, so fucked with that he just decided, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not playing and I have the money that I don't have to play. I don't have to play by your rules. I don't have to play with you. I don't have to play the way you dictate me to play. I don't have to do all this. Was he serious about the red pilling? Or was he just riding some wave? Did he have serious insights? And of course, where is that box of information that he said, right? That storage unit of information that he had. Let's see. Was his red pilling serious? Oh, all the cards fell out of the deck. <laughs> Let's see here. This is red pilling serious. Eight of hearts, eight of diamonds. Always the same cards. Always the same cards. Gosh. So what they're telling me, I've got the Eight of Diamonds again, the King of Hearts again, the Jack of Clubs again, is that he was hardworking when it came to business. He overworked himself with the Seven of Clubs. Um, there was no balance in his life and the Eight of Hearts here as well. And um, he, he was unbalanced because of that. Okay, so was he red pilling for real? Or was he a show? Five of clubs and four of clubs. Uh, he was definitely an agent for change, desiring to bring progress and change into the work arena, into how business is done. Um, people brought him information. That's what I'm literally seeing and hearing, is that once he outed himself as being a specific type of person, people would literally give him information he didn't ask for. So his red pilling was for real. Is he disincarnate? I get an immediate yes, but he's around Janice, his wife. Um, she can connect to him spiritually if she wants to, right? So she's, yeah. But he, I think he's going to come back, you guys. Like I'm feeling like he's going to come back and he's going to go into business again. And he's going to do it different from last time. He's going to do it different from last time. All right, so what's the message around his death? Is he Was he Epstein? What's the message around his death? How did he pass away? How did he pass, please? How did he pass? Wow. Okay, we've got um, 
we've got the nine of hearts the queen of uh diamonds and the jack of hearts which is interesting now let me just feel into this for a second you guys the nine of hearts usually has to do with This is interesting. The Nine of Hearts usually has to do with wish fulfillment. The Jack of Hearts is someone younger that you truly love. The Queen of Diamonds is um, a professional woman, cultured, wealthy jet setter, celebrity, account executive, CPA, bank manager, government official. Um, this is clearly saying because the diamonds have to do with business and government. Um, it's clearly saying that there, whoa, this is dangerous water for me to try to you guys, but the queen of diamonds allegedly usually has to, I want to say that there was a female that was involved that may have been involved with certain kinds of agencies that may have been involved with certain things. And, um, there was some kind of a wish fulfillment that happened. So the wishes of this entity or agency were fulfilled okay uh, this was a young person who committed this okay so a younger person um, who was possibly with him that's all I'm gonna say to that but no the cards are stating that he did not uh, commit what he is alleged to have commit, committed. Okay, where can we find the hard drive he was speaking of? Who has that hard drive? And then I want to know if that high-rise incident happened. There was a high-rise in Florida which just came down, um, which hit the news because of the intense destruction that it caused and the loss of lives but also because allegedly he had an apartment in that high-rise that allegedly had the hard drive. Is this true? Did that high-rise in Florida have anything to do with it? Mm. Okay, I'm getting a... I'm getting a yes. Uh, okay. Where is the hard drive? Where is the hard drive? Locate the hard drive for me, please. Where's the hard drive? Um, I got the nine of spades, the eight of hearts, and the eight of spades. So that... Mm-mm-mm-mm. It could be that they managed to destroy it. Um, it could be that they managed to destroy it. I do feel it was hidden somewhere in his home. Um, it may have been in a safe. And it's the nine of spades is, is ruin, destruction. And the Eight of Spades is, um, could be a workshop, but something that you have to work at to get into, so that might be a safe. And the Eight of Hearts is definitely, anything in the hearts is definitely in the home, okay? So it was in his home, it's probably destroyed, and that is, that's what the cards are saying. Will we ever get the information? Was there a backup? And I'm getting the nine of clubs. Uh, there is a backup, but it's a distance away. It's far away, probably in a different country. Will they release it? Um, he was so random, right? So this, this could be someone who's... Okay, 
there is a backup you guys and someone has it who was like a restaurant or a bar acquaintance okay someone that he either met in a bar used to meet in a bar used to see in restaurants and um he and then the four of diamonds pops up so this is definitely something a strong box a jewelry safe that kind of uh, a safe that kind of thing okay so what i'm feeling is that the original thing was destroyed um in his home either his home was raided or it really had to do with that high rise as the cards indicate and that that was destroyed but of course he has a backup with someone and this person he used to either like going out to bars with and I, this person is in a different country and for some reason they, i'm seeing asia and it might be sold it might be sold or somehow made money off of and it's currently in a nobody knows how to open it that's the thing like nobody knows how to open the 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 hard drive or the files on that thing they don't know how to open it and whoever has it and so it's probably going to be sold and right now it's sitting in a very safe structure okay and it's it's someone that he either met at a bar or like to meet at a bar okay so where is he now and what's he doing now um, I feel like drifting like in a hammock so he's definitely recuperating and He's looking at options the joker popped up so anything goes i do feel he's coming back and he's coming back as a businessman and he's going to do it differently whatever uh he has on these people has to do with finances as well he somehow got access to some serious paperwork okay that uh, that exposes their financial actions which exposes probably different criminal things i don't know <laughs> So let me see here. I'm switching to tarot cards. And what's the final message, please? And then I'll just tie it all together. What's the final message, John McAfee? John McAfee. He saw himself as a blind fool who didn't succeed in life and ended learning about love so that's the the summary of his life why do i say that i get the eight of swords um which indicates blindness which indicates not being able to see the eyes shut on this card not able to see a way out the second card that came out was the fool and so someone who is folly right and um it's not always new beginnings usually but it can also be hastiness and stepping into things um, stepping off a cliff without any security that kind of thing someone who does radical a hasty acts unwell thought out acts not well thought out acts and um the seven of pentacles was something that didn't work out and the six the lovers card right so that's the summary of his, his life you guys a blind fool who didn't succeed in anything that's how he saw himself except at the end and ultimately finding love so he thinks he made the right decision in the end he chose love he decided for love he decided for humanity and not for himself okay you guys so to summarize this reading on John McAfee was he a madman or a genius he definitely came in as a change maker he came in to bring change to the world of business and the way business is conducted he came in to bring major changes to the technological industry as well he felt he felt like he stumbled upon his luck he didn't really realize like how important his little invention was all the way at the beginning with the antiviral software and he did mention that antivirus software nowadays does not work to not bother using it and to rather um you know just watch where you surf kind of thing but um he also because the the virus programs are too quick like they're you can't keep up with that it, it's it's just too much so he made himself an enemy by the uh everything that he said and put out there into the world 
um, which he really believed. He was not paranoid. He was not schizophrenic. There was nothing wrong with him mentally. He just took it to the next level because he could, because he had the money to not play the games anymore that people wanted him to play. He refused. And he made some mistakes, but he doesn't regret any of them. I'm not picking up on that. Um, he did love his wife in the end, but in the beginning, there were a lot of women. And um, that kind of broke his heart. It disillusioned him from love in a way, made it harder for him to love. So his last, his wife was a real miracle to him. And he went through his life feeling ultimately like a failure, ultimately feeling like he couldn't get anything right, like he couldn't do anything right, feeling ostracized, feeling hunted by his own people, his own country, whom he felt had made enough off of him as well. Um, he is definitely deceased. He did not suicide himself. The first um, uh, hard drive or the first you know, the main copy of the information is destroyed, most likely. And it was in his home, and his home was either ransacked or destroyed on purpose. There was a female somebody, okay, let's put dark shadowy figure, you know, that was on his case working him. Uh, there was another younger person who was close to him, who betrayed him, um, who was working for others. And there was also a, uh, there's another person in a far off country, which I feel is like Asia, that kind of vibe, energy, atmosphere is coming up for me, that has a copy and has no clue how to open it. Um, I guess a hacker would have to go at it, but there is a copy of all those files that were destroyed. Um, they're probably going to be sold. I see that a, a small something, a small hard drive, a small drive, yeah, sitting in a safe. So it's in a safe um, far, far away with a guy that he used to, that he either met in a bar drinking or he used to go for drinks with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? Otherwise, um, he's only remorseful about the connections, his personal connections to his family and how he treated those. But it's not a remorse, it's a sadness that it couldn't have been anything else than what it was. And um, he deeply wishes to be able to communicate his love to the people that he left behind. But otherwise, um, he's swinging in his hammock, just recuperating for the next, next go around. Okay, you guys, there you have it. And um, he wasn't paranoid. He was receiving death threats. And um, yeah, there you have it. Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you would like your own personal read, don't hesitate to book now with a 30% off offer for the Syrian Dreams Gateway. Okay, take care, you guys. Bye.